हेलो एंड गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू द ई लर्निंग प्रोग्राम इनिशिएटेड बाय श्री ज्ञान विजय विद्यापीठ फॉर द स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ स्टैंडर्ड 9 वंस अगेन नाइस टू सी यू इन टुडेस इंग्लिश लिटरेचर लेक्चर फॉर सेमेस्टर 1 इन टुडेस लेक्चर वी विल बी इंट्रोड्यूसिंग आरसेल्फ्स कमेंसिंग अ न्यू चैप्टर व्हिच इज अ पोएम इन यूनिट 2 अर्लियर इन यूनिट 2 वी हैड लुक्ड इनटू द सेकंड चैप्टर द प्रोज चैप्टर that was the sound of music which contained two parts it was a chapter about two musical maestros evelyn glenny and bismillah khan we very well understood about these two so it's now time to look into the second poem from the second unit so as you can see the title being written on the board is a very simple poem that we need to learn yet the poem is very important because it imparts a moral message to us the poet gives us a moral message by the help of this poem the name of the poem is very simple as you can see it's wind uh, one of the important elements that is surrounding us isn't it and these days the component oxygen which is to be found in the air in the wind has become so important for us well we'll be looking into the poem wind and try to find out what the poet is trying to say as you can see along with the title it is mentioned over there on the board it has been written by subramanya bharti so the poet who has written this is subramanya bharti but along with this another piece of information is also being displayed just below that it is translated by ek ramanuj now what does this mean well to elaborate on this point the poem originally has been written by subramanya bharati in the tamil language and later it has been translated into the english language by a great translator ak now that is what it means well so before we proceed and try to understand about the poem read the poem and understand its literary as well as the figurative meaning just like we did in the last poem the road not taken it is important for us to know about subramanya bharati the tamil writer so have a look at your screen the image being displayed to you with the necessary information so here is the information about subramanya bharati about the poet he was born on 11th december 1882 and left the world he died on 11th september 1921 subramanya bharati was a tamil writer poet journalist indian independence activist social reformer and polyglot well a new word for you polyglot who is a polyglot a person who is known or to have been knowing uh, many languages is called a polyglot so a person who knows or is able to use several languages is called a polyglot so keep this in mind popularly known as mahakavi bharati or the translated word is great poet bharati he was a pioneer of modern tamil poetry pioneer means someone who makes a beginning is called a pioneer pioneer of modern tamil poetry and is considered one of the greatest tamil literary figures of all times his numerous works included fiery songs kindling patriotism during the indian independence movement so during the indian independence songs written by him played a vital role in arousing the spirits of nationalism and patriotism amongst the people of the country he fought for the emancipation of women against child marriage stood for reforming brahmanism and religion he was also in solidarity with dalits and muslims the next image shows the picture of subramanya bharati the name written in english as well as in the tamil language it is a commemorative postage stamp bearing his picture and the value of the postage stamp further some more information about his place of birth and where did he die is mentioned He was born on 11 December 1882 as we just read earlier and he was born in a place called Ettayapuram or Ettayapuram estate British India so it was 
a region of the British time, pre-independence time, when British were in power. And he died on 12th September 1921, just at the age of 38. So he died quite young. Madras, Madras presidency, because that time we did not have the states as we have today. It was British India at that time. Other names that he was known by was Bharati, Subhaya, Sakti Dasan or Mahakavi, Mandasu, Kavignar, Veer Kavi, Selidas. So all these were titles that he was known by. Talk about his citizenship of he was a British Raj. So we can not say he was an Indian. He was someone who was born in the British rule. So British Raj we can say. But an Indian. Occupation journalist, poet, writer, teacher, patriot and freedom fighter. He participated in the Indian independence movement. Well, some information about his spouse has been given. And the number of children he had. Plus, the most important thing is the signature that you see. He must be signing in Tamil language. Well, further we have information about in the next picture. Born in Etayapuram of Tirunel Valley district, present day Thuddukudi in 1882. Bharati had his early education in Tiruvel, Tirunel Valley and Varanasi and worked as a journalist with many newspapers including the Hindu, Bala, Bharata, Vijaya, Chakravartini, the Swadesha, Mitran and India in 1908 an arrest warrant was issued against Bharati by the government of British India caused him to move to Puducherry or Pondicherry where he lived until 1918. His influence on Tamil literature is phenomenal. Although it is said that he was proficient in around 14, into 14 languages including three non-Indian foreign languages. That is what we say he was a polyglot. So his favorite language was Tamil. He was prolific in his output. He covered political, social and spiritual themes. The songs and poems composed by Bharati are very often used in Tamil cinema and have become staples in the literary and musical repertoire of Tamil artists throughout the world. He paved the way for modern blank verse. He wrote many books and poems on how Tamil is beautiful in nature. So this was some basic information that we took about the poet that is Subramanya Bharati. Well, you should not forget that this poem has been translated by A.K. Ramanujan. So we should have a little bit of word about A.K. Ramanujan as well. So the image showing you about A.K. Ramanujan. A.K. Ramanujan is a Kannad and English poet well known for his translation of classical and modern poetry. So this was the information about the poet Subramanya Bharti and A.K. Ramanujan, the translator of the poem. Let us now talk about the poem itself, Wind. The poem Wind is about how to make wind our friend. That's the basic thing. The wind blows strongly and causes a lot of destruction. We know that when it blows, when it is a windy day, what happens? Everything flies here and there. And we are very much annoyed and we are not disturbed also. Therefore, how can we make friends with the wind? That is what basically the poem is all about. Further elaborating to this, I can say the poet talks to the wind and describes the power of the wind that has been mentioned in the poem. That it is a very destructive thing. The poet calls or refers wind to be a very destructive thing in nature as if it is a thing. It is personified over here. Well, moreover, talking about the figurative thing rather than the literary thing. The poet has linked the destructive power of the wind to the adversities of life, to all the challenges and problems that we come across in life. He says that we face a number of challenges and problems in our life and there are two types of people. 
who manage or handle the situation. There could be strong enough people, there could be weak people. So the poet says that for the ones who are weak would be one who will break down, who will not be able to resist these problems. But the stronger people will, be, will emerge out of it in a more stronger way. So whenever such people, that is strong people have a challenge or an adversity in life, they overcome the adversity and they will find out a solution to the problems. Whereas those who are weak will become more weaker and succumb to the situation and fail in life. That is what the poet tries to mention as an overall thing in the poem. So this poem, the poet gives us an important message that we should be mentally tough and physically strong in order to survive the hardships of life. We should be able to face life with great uh, determination and power. The poet says that we should make these destructive forces our friends and with our strength and determination. So that is what the poet tries to convey in this poem. Well, without further ado, let's read the lines of the poem and try to understand each of these lines uh, in details. Well, as you see, it is a uh, free verse over here. You do not find any stanzas over here, unlike the poem, The Road Not Taken. We had stanzas over there. Here the entire poem is written as one. There are no stanzas, there are no verses over here. So it's a free verse style poem. Wind comes softly. Don't break the shutters of the windows. Don't scatter the papers. Don't throw down the books on the shelf. There, look what you did. You threw all that all you threw them all down. You tore the pages of the books. You brought rain again. You are very clever at poking fun at weaklings. Frail crumbling, frail crumbling houses, crumbling doors, crumbling rafters, crumbling wood, crumbling bodies, crumbling lives, crumbling hearts. The wind god winnows and crushes them all. Well, let us understand this much part first. So here what is the poet trying to tell us? The poet is actually calling the wind or saying, that giving us an idea or telling us that how does wind come? Wind comes softly. So he is welcoming the wind, he is asking the wind to come. He is perhaps requesting the wind to come in a very soft manner. He is telling wind not to be loud, not to be, not to be harsh, not to be in a very forceful manner. Don't come and visit me in a very forceful manner. Be very very soft. So he is saying in the very first line, wind come softly. So he is requesting the wind to be appearing or to be visiting him in a very soft manner. Why? Don't break the shutters of the windows because we know when a great wind blows, when wind blows at great speed, it can break down the window panes. The glass window panes that you have in your house can be shuttered off completely. So he is saying, don't break the shutters of the window. That is the window pane. Don't break it down. He is uh, commanding, he is telling the wind not to do so because it's a lot of damage that is occurring to his house. And he is scared also, isn't it? So don't shutter, don't break the shutters of the window. Further he is saying in the next line, don't scatter the pages. What happens if your pages are lying open somewhere, loose pages if you have, or even if it's a book or something lying on the table, papers. So they all get scattered here and then due to the wind. The wind has simply come, entered the house, entered your, entered your uh, living place and it is scattering all the papers here and there, creating a great mess around it. Do, does anyone like that happening? No, isn't it? Sometimes what happens when suddenly the fan is put on and your papers are lying, what happens? You are rushing to catch the papers so that they don't fly away. So it's a natural thing that you react to. Similarly, when the wind is coming with great speed, great force, it is creating destruction. That is what we just understood that wind is proving out to be a destructive force. Well, this is interconnected or in a way connected to the life of the people. So what is it telling the wind? Don't scatter the pages. pages. Don't scatter my pages. Don't uh, put them here and there. It's very difficult for me. Don't throw down the books on the shelf. But if the wind is even more stronger, sometimes the wind is even more stronger, even more powerful and the destruction is far more superior, far more. 
then simply turning the pages or scattering the pages if it is a even more powerful wind an extraordinary powerful wind what will it do it will it will cause even more destruction what kind of a destruction is saying third line over here don't throw down the books on the shelf well book is a big thing isn't it a a a thing which has got a lot of weight inside it so where is it throwing down the books from from the shelf the books that are lying in the shelf probably racked over there put over there so the wind is so powerful that it is able to push down the entire set of books or the number of books lying over there which is quite weightful bringing it down onto the ground therefore don't throw down the books on the shelf so he is in a way commanding or requesting the resume that the wind being so destructive so powerful that he is telling the wind not to do so he is scared of that he is afraid of that he does not want that to happen that's why he is telling the wind not to do so because it is creating problem for the poet so the poet is saying don't throw down the books on the shelf that are lying on the shelf don't throw it down. but we know what happens when actually a powerful gust of wind gets into our house it can bring down the entire shelf or the books lying on the shelf it can create a lot of damage and destruction in our house things start uh, scattering here and there not just the book but many things also start scattering here and there well further what is he saying you tore the pages of the book see further he is complaining he is saying that you tore the pages of my book now what should i do so you tore the pages of the book you created damage and destruction maybe the book was very valuable he was supposed to take care of it or he liked the book very much so here he is complaining to the uh, wind that you tore the pages of the books and it is because of you i have to bear this damage further is saying not just this you brought rain again so hardly the rain had gone away though we like the rain isn't it but <clears throat> when it comes along with the wind what happens the water gets into our house the slant shower gets into our house it it because makes the thing messy around if the water gets into our house to the window pane or to the open windows so he is saying you tore the pages of the book you brought rain again so again the rain is coming into my house so he is making a sort of a complaint to the wind that you are the one responsible for that rain coming into my otherwise the rain would simply fall down because you are bring you are there you are getting into my house the rain is also coming inside it is not that the rain is directly coming when the water falls from the sky what happens it simply pours down if there is no wind along with that rain but if it is a windy day or if the wind is blowing along with the rains the showers will become slanted and probably it will come into our house also so therefore the poet is saying you brought rain again you are very clever at poking fun at weakling so here is a wonderful line that the poet is saying you are very clever so he is praising and the the cleverness of the wind and how clever you are he is telling to the uh, wind in a in not in a kind of a praising manner but he is trying to say that you are so sharp enough so clever enough at poking fun poking means troubling poking fun creating kind of uh, a prank on weak people weaklings so anything and everything that is weak it could be related to people also so weak plants pots lying down on the parapet of the wall or somewhere isn't it things lying on the table light things lying on the table books lying on the table so anything that is uh, happening to be weak against the power of wind he says you are clever enough to poke them to put them down to trouble them that is what he saying poking fun at weaklings you are able to trouble them you are able to put them down that is what he says in this line you are very clever at poking fun at weaklings frail crumbling houses <coughs> crumbling doors crumbling rafters is yes. uh, understood these three things frail means weak something that's fragile something that can get shattered something that can get destroyed very easily so we say frail isn't it the word frail means weak so the first thing the poet is saying frail crumbling house crumbling means falling something that can put uh, come to the ground easily or falling down so weak falling houses when you see the weak falling houses you act upon it isn't it sometimes it happens with a strong gust of wind in some places some places where the houses are not made of 
proper materials or if it's a very old house about to fall wind plays the role of crumbling it down making it fall down many a times we hear in the rainy season that uh, a house has collapsed why does it happen because the house is already weak it is already frail already delicate only a gust of wind is required for it to shatter it into pieces and that happens and who plays that role wind plays that role of putting it down otherwise without the wind it was standing in its place although it was weak it could fall down at any given point of time but it is the wind that plays the role at that particular point of time to bring it down so frail crumbling houses what does it do it acts upon the frame crumbling uh, houses the weak houses and brings it down further the poet says crumbling doors what are what are you, what are you doing you are falling down the doors when you time what happen the door is very weak the door will also fall down it is not fitted properly or it's a old door or if it's an open door sometimes it keeps on banging here and there isn't it when the door is not properly latched or it's an unlatched door and a strong gust of wind enters your house what happens the door starts banging against the wall and gradually if it is not locked properly or uh, care is not taken it may eventually fall down also it may break down also so uh, the poet is saying crumbling doors further is saying crumbling rafters a new word for you rafters rafters is the term used while building up the slopy roofs and the beam or the support that is required to build up that slopy roof of a hut or a house or we say the word beam beam that supports a ceiling or a roof so a beam or a structure it could be a wooden structure it could be a metal structure so it's called a rafter a beam that supports the roof of a house is called a rafter so crumbling rafters sometimes the rafters are very big or you break down these rafters to bring down these rafter and therefore the entire roof collapses crumbling wood if the house is made of wood weak wood so it is responsible for falling down the wood also sometimes the tree falls down isn't it here wood also can be about or could be understood about the tree a tree that is standing strong and firm but due to a great gust of wind a strong force of the wind many times we see when we pass by the roads during the uh, windy time during the monsoon season that along with the rain a strong gust of wind a very powerful force of wind has brought down big trees isn't it many times you observe in the city side and the road gets blocked so here wood refers to the tree also over here crumbling bodies so sometimes something that you see a structure standing referring to anything over here as a body something that is standing a body could be a car also isn't it a car standing many times you must have witnessed in videos that a strong gust of wind when a lot of rain and wind has been it is carrying away the uh, car along with it lifting it up almost and throwing it away so it could be any body referring so crumbling bodies where bodies refers to any object that is at stationary state wind can make it fall down can lift it and throw it away to other places therefore crumbling bodies and further crumbling lives it could bring a great disaster in people's life as well so crumbling lives is being said over here crumbling lives finally crumbling hearts that is what the poet says well we try to understand the figurative meaning over here so what is being said over here that just like we do the examples of the word books on the shelves papers that scattered the shutters of the windows being broken down here the poet is saying the difficult situation the adversities that person faces in life if he or she the person is not able to uh, make friends with the wind he is not able to uh, meet with the challenges or find out a solution to the challenges it will he or she will succumb he will fail in life and he will not be able to survive anymore that's what the uh, poet is trying to tell us in the figurative way further we will discuss the figurative in a detailed manner when we go through the figurative summary well the next few lines that we have to read and understand <coughs> the wind god winnows and crushes them all so 
So what is being told to us? Those who are not able to meet these things, meet up to the expectations of the wind, they are crushed down by the by the wind. Where you can see the wind god. What is being mentioned over here by the poet? The word wind is being referred to as god over here. I mean, people who uh, consider wind to be the god, isn't it? So here the poet is referring wind to act as a godly affair, isn't it? We say, how does the wind blow? And many times we say, it is God who creates it. It is not you and I who have the power to create the wind. Can we create wind? No. We can't create wind. Naturally, wind is created as a phenomena and God can be responsible for that. Well, it is the wish and will of God to create wind. So, the wind god, here wind is being considered to be the god, winnows and crushes them all. Now, what the word winnows is? Winnows is the action of separating the shaft from the wheat. You may have seen the thrasher doing the work of. Thrasher is a device or a instrument or you can say a machine that separates the shaft, that is the outer covering of the wheat from the wheat that we eat or the rice separate from the shaft. So, uh, earlier you must have seen women taking a kind of <coughs> piece of uh, say basket sort of thing and putting wheat into it and falling it down, making it down fall on the ground with the help of the wind the shaft would be separated and the wheat would become separate. So this is what happens. The action of separating the shaft from the wind is called winnowing. This action is called winnowing. So here it is referring to God, the wind God. The wind God winnows. It means it separates and crushes them all. So all those who turn out to be weak in life are crushed by the wind. By the wind God. So the message that the poet is trying to tell us, we should be strong enough with self-determination so that we can face the hardships of life and not get winnowed away by the wind god or the adversities that we face in life. Well, we have few more lines to read. So come, let's build strong homes. Let's join the doors firmly. Practice to firm the body. Make the heart steadfast. Do this and the wind will be friends with us. He makes strong fires roar and flourish. The wind blows out weak fires. He makes strong fires roar and flourish. His friendship is good. We praise him every day. So here are the next few lines that is being told to us. Let's understand the literary meaning. First of all, what is being told to us over here? So the poet is telling to make friendship with the wind. So come, let's build strong homes. He is saying, the poet is saying that rather than blaming onto the wind, that the wind has made a mess, rather than cursing the wind, rather than not being friendlier with the wind, he is saying, let's make ourselves strong, let's make our home strong so that it does not shatter away the windows. Let's make our body secure, the things that are lying here and there when the wind comes, or be well prepared in advance so that things don't fly, no matter how much wind comes into our house. They don't scatter here and there. Let's make, make it securely, firmly put in one place so that it doesn't. Say, if the books are falling down from the shelf due to the wind, let's have a covering over the shelf so that the wind doesn't enter into that shelf, into the opening of the shelf or the compartment shelf so the books don't fall down. Isn't it? So what is he saying? So, come, let's build strong homes. Let's make, make our homes strong. Physically, he's saying, in the literal sense. So that our houses are so protected that the wind will not be able to make any destruction in our house in the physical sense. Let's join the doors firmly. So again he's talking about the doors, just like he spoke about the doors, that uh, crumbling doors, the wind has fallen down my doors. Let's make our doors so strong that the wind will not be able to do anything to our doors. It will not be able to destroy our doors. So make sure that when you keep the door open, it already has a door stop or something. So that no matter how much the wind uh, enacts upon the door, it has got no effect on it. So let's make our doors firm. Even when you close the door, let it be so securely closed that the wind cannot make any destruction to it. It cannot cause any harm to you or to harm, harm to your home or your doors. Further, he is saying practice to firm the body. He is saying 
to make our bodies our things so strong that no wind can harm or destroy us further is saying make the heart steadfast he is asking us to make our heart very very steadfast firm steadfast means firm very very secure prepare ourselves so mentally that we are not bothered about the wind we are always prepared to face the challenges and the adversities in life so make our inner self so strong that no such adverse situation can bring us down break us down that is what the poet is telling us in the figurative way he is saying do this so the above thing is asking us to do do this and wind will be friends with us so if we follow these advice given by the poet to us by making our house strong making our mind physically uh, fit and tough to face the challenges that come across in our life what is he saying wind will be friends over here your wind is referring to the adverse situations the adversity of life do this and the wind will be friends with us you will no more have enmity with friend with the wind you will not find wind your enemy what you were once thinking is destructive in nature is it someone that is destructive in nature or someone who harms you cannot be your friend so for the time being the or in the first few lines we understood the poet telling us that the wind was destructive for him but in the last few lines he is telling us how to be friends with it well he makes strong the wind blows out weak fires and he makes strong fires roar and flourish so what is he further saying that if you happen to do these things what will happen the wind blows out weak fires well let's understand the literal meaning first of all when you uh, ignite a fire is it it when you have ignited a fire made a small fire in your house you burnt a few papers a pieces of wood or a matchstick even what happens and in that very point of time a strong gust of wind comes but it's a weak fire a small fire easily it will be put off it will extinguish is it but if you have created if you have made a big fire if it's a fierce one if it's a firm one so the wind blows out big fires he makes strong fire roar but yes if it is a big fire it's a bonfire you made isn't it you must have experienced a bonfire that you create in the winters outside your house or in a veranda or some place with a lot of pieces of wood inside it some fuel inside it no matter how much the wind blows on the contrary the fire becomes more fierce more strong it roars the flames get even more ignited but if it's a weak fire it extinguishes you must experience this isn't it looking into the strong fire and the weak fire therefore the poet gives us the message the wind blows out the weak fires so if you are weak by physically mentally you are not able to think about a solution to your problems you will extinguish you will not be able to survive the hardships and finally you will fail but yes if you are strong enough if you are bold enough to stand against the odds the wind will become a, a boon for you it will become your strength and you will be able to come out of it you will roar and flourish flourish means to progress you will be able to win so you will be able to roar and you will be able to flourish even in adverse situation the hard times will pass away and you will come out of it with great uh, achievements so finally he greets or says his friendship is good so it is good to have friendship with the wind we should have friendship with the wind we should have friendship with the adverse time don't consider the weaker times or the bad times in your life as your enemy no if you consider it enemy it will prove out to be enemy to you rather than consider it to be your friend try to find out a solution make your weaknesses your strength and then see how good friend it proves to be finally the poet praises by saying we praise him every day so we should be praising it every day do not curse the situation that you are in. try to think about it fine it's the situation that i am in life and praise it well today i am in a bad situation i will come out of this and i will be in a good situation tomorrow well so you see this is the message that the poet has given us um, from this poem we learned the poem does not have any kind of stanzas or verses it's a free verse poem as we can see over here it is written all together well let us now look into the summarization of the poem 
we learned the index of the poem so we will just go through the summary in details and try to understand a bit more about it in this poem the wind has been personified so we learned about the different figures of speech earlier uh, when we were working with the chapter the poem the road not taken so we are well acknowledged with the different figures of speech we will be doing the literary devices in the upcoming lecture about this poem as well in this poem the wind has been personified uh, to be a person the poet is talking to the wind so he considers wind to be a person and therefore he is having a conversation with the wind and he tells it to come softly then he describes the destructive nature of the wind so in the first part of the poem you can see there are two parts the first part is about the description of the wind and what it does and second part is about how to be friends with it so he describes the destructive nature of the wind he says that the wind blows so strongly that it breaks the shutters of the window and scatters the papers it is so powerful that the books which were kept on the shelves have fallen further he says then he says to the wind look at the destruction that is caused by you you have thrown everyone down and disorganized everything owing to your force the pages of the books have been torn down you have brought the rain further the poet says that the wind is very clever in making fun of those people who are weak so you see how he is blaming the wind by this the poet means that when a strong wind blows all the things which are fragile which are very delicate weak and feeble break easily initially when the poet had has introduced the wind then he has compared its power with a small child that's why he asked the wind to come soft so initially when he had introduced the wind and said that wind come softly he was comparing it with a child just like a child is very soft and supple but later the wind has become destructive like a youth full of energy violence and destruction so now the wind that was like a small child soft and supple gradually has taken the uh, form of a violent youth a youth full of energy violence and destruction well further here the poet says the wind is so mighty so strong so gigantic that it is breaking everything that comes in its way so whatever comes in the way of the wind when it is blowing it shatters down everything it brings down everything he says that the weak houses are falling the doors are breaking down the beam which was supporting the roof of the building is falling and all the things made of wood material are falling further he says that the people are unable to stand properly due to the heavy wind and they are also falling isn't it sometimes when you are walking by the on the road and suddenly the wind starts you must experience that you are unable to keep your balance and you are about to fall on the ground that is what it says over here that people are also not able to balance themselves they are also tending to fall down <coughs> due to the heaviness due to the heavy blow of the wind all the living things which are weak are either breaking down or falling so he is further adding and saying that living things also if they are weak or they are breaking down or they are falling the people are scared of the wind and their hearts are beating as fast as they can at a very faster rate so isn't it when a strong gust of wind blows when the situation becomes very very windy cyclonic what happened we start remembering our lord isn't it the god to calm down the wind because we know if such a thing happened it it would create a devastating thing it could turn out into be a, a very very destructive thing if it becomes very wild and we you must have seen isn't it uh, a tsunami sort of thing so what happens that people are scared of the wind and their hearts are beating at a very fast rate our hearts start beating very fast that is what happens the poet is addressing the wind as god so what is the poet saying further wind to be the god cause wind god has god has 
uh, almighty powers isn't it so the poet is addressing the wind as god and he is compared he has compared the people with wheat and says that he winnowed the wheat to separate the grain from the chaff similarly the god wind god separates the strong people from the weak people just like we use the force of the wind to winnow the chaff from its seed from the wheat similarly here a comparison is being made for people and wheat just like chaff is separated from wheat similarly god separates the weaker ones from the stronger ones due to heavy and strong wind all the weak things fall and get destroyed for that we added over here that due to the heavy wind strong wind things are getting destroyed weak things are getting destroyed the poet goes on to say that the wind will not listen to us no matter what you do no matter how much you request the wind is not going to listen to you if you tell the wind not to blow and destroy things is it going to listen is it going to obey no it is going to do what it likes so what should we so what do we say instead of instructing the wind instead of giving it instruction and commanding it it is better we prepare ourselves we should build strong homes so that the wind cannot cause any harm to us and close the door tightly so that the wind does not enter our home we should make our body strong and our heart firm it means we should not be scared in such situation we should keep our mind calm keep our heart strong <clears throat> so that we can face these difficult difficulties and overcome all the challenges he says that by doing all these things the wind will become friends with us so if you do these things if you rather than instructing the wind do these things wind will become or turn out to be a friend to you you will it will seem like a friend to you no more you will be scared of it no more you will be afraid of it here the poet means that the problems would come in our life so here starts the uh, figurative meaning here the poet means that the problems would come in our life we should make ourselves strong enough to overcome them rather than uh, grieving over it rather than making complaints out of it we should be strong enough to face those problems every hurdle every problem every difficulty in our life makes us stronger and help us explore our inner strength so you see that's the crux of the poem finally the poet elaborates that the wind blows all the things which are weak it will not uh, spare anything whatever is weak that comes its way it will destroy it only those things which are strong remain and flourish to become stronger so the things are strong strong enough they will remain in its place they will be firm in its place and further with the passage of time it will flourish the friend of the wind is good the friendship of the wind is good it is good to have friendship with the wind and we should not cry or consider ourselves weak when problems arise in our life this is also the figurative meaning instead of that we should see them as an opportunity so many times people consider uh, difficulties the adversity or the adverse situations in life as problems no we should not take them as problem we should take them as challenges and opportunities in our life and try to overcome them and to explore our ability and strength to face them with courage these problems make us mentally and physically strong through them we learn to overcome the hardships of life so you see this was the summarization of the entire poem that we came through about the wind so i hope the poem wind has been well understood by you along with the summarization that i tried to give you i tried to give you my uh, inputs into this i hope this is well understood by you in the upcoming lecture we will look into the thinking about the poem text the section about it the question answer section we will uh, look into the figurative uh the literary devices the figures of speech about this poem and try to acknowledge ourselves more about it well the final thing that i would like to discuss with you today is the meanings that you come across that's the glossary part you have a few words given to you poking fun which is making fun of frail weak rafters sloping beams supporting a roof 
विनो ब्लो ग्रेन फ्री ऑफ शाफ सेपरेट ग्रेन फ्रॉम द हस बाय ग्लोइंग ऑन इट एंड स्टेट फास्ट अनवेवरिंग सो दीज आर अ फ्यू ग्लॉसरीज द मीनिंग्स ऑफ वर्ड्स दैट यू नीड टू रीड एंड अंडरस्टैंड सो एज अ पार्ट ऑफ होमवर्क यू हैव टू राइट द पोअम वंस अलॉन्ग विथ द ग्लॉसरी गिवन टू यू इन योर मटेरियल इन द कंटेंट गिवन टू यू so as a homework do this and submit it as a part of the homework after the lecture note it down So note down the homework carefully. It's a poem that you have to write once, and the glossary you have to write once. Fine. This is all for today's lecture. See you soon in the upcoming lecture, and then take care. Have a nice day, and goodbye.